for the introduction. Thank you for everybody to come. So today my talk is about active regression via linear sample specification. This is joint work with Agri Price, who is there. So before I state the question, let me uh, let me start with some examples. So a classic problem motivates this work is polynomial regression that finds a low degree polynomial fits a set of data points. So another problem, another problem we consider in this work is a sparse Fourier transform where the signals are approximated by a small sum of Fourier characters. So now let me give you the formal definition. So we, so we say given a noise signal Y as our observation, so every time we can query arbitrary point X in the domain, and we, we assume that uh, Y is close to a given family such as no degree polynomials or sparse Fourier transform. So let F star be the least squares minimizer in this family, which minimizes the distance to Y, which is defined to be the expected L2 norm over all the signals in this family. So the task is to minimize the number of queries to find F tilde that is close to F star. And in this work, we are interested in the agnostic learning setting. So we wanted the distance between F tilde and F star is the most epsilon times the L2 loss of the least squares minimizer. So let me first uh, discuss our results for linear families. So our main result is, is, is a robust learning algorithm that takes big old D over epsilon queries for any linear family of dimension D. So previously, this was known for only for polynomials by Cohen, Davenport, Leviathan. And then I will give an alternate um, statement for this result. So let's consider active regression. So in the classic setting of linear regression, given a matrix X of dimension n times d and a vector y, so we know beta star, the, the parameter vector minimizing the L2 loss x times beta minus y is just the pseudo inverse of x times y. However, to calculate this beta star, we need to know the whole vector y. So this raises a natural question. Consider the following scenario. What if we have the whole unlabeled data matrix x, but on the other hand, the labels in y are expensive to query? So we state this question, we consider this question in active learning. So we formulate it this way. Can we look, only look at X and pick a few entries in Y to query, say, a subset S and produce a hypothesis beta tilde that is close to the true minimizer. So the guarantee we want to achieve is X times beta tilde minus X times beta star is less than epsilon times the L2 loss of the true minimizer. Notice that this is equivalent to question one, when n goes to infinity, so the vector becomes a signal. And our algorithm give a, concrete, give a firm answer to this question. We bound S to be in the order of D over epsilon, which suffice for the guarantee in expectation. So now let me uh, review some previous work. So it is well known that uh, an average score achieves this uh, with, with size in the order of d log d plus d over epsilon. So we refer to the survey by Mahoney. So another nine of this problem is volume sampling. So in your beautiful work, Darren Ziski Womans give an algorithm with exactly d queries, except for big fixed epsilon. And this was later strengthened to arbitrary epsilon by Darren Ziski Womans who with S of size d log d plus d over epsilon. So then let me give a few remarks about our results. So one, the first one is that our bound is information theoretically optimal up to constant. So the second thing is that if we replace the vector y by a matrix, our algorithm also guarantees the Frobenius norm in expectation in matrix regression. So the final remark is that uh, we also give extension from in-sample error to out-of-sample error when the underlying distribution under the, of the L2 distance is unknown. So 
So then let me say a few words about our approach. So the basic idea is to apply important sampling. So we observe that in sampling proportion to this quantity, supreme over f, fx squared normalizing by the L2 norm, reduce the query complexity for any family, not necessarily linear. Not surprising, this turns out to be equivalent to an average score for linear families. So everything so far looks good. However, this only gives one distribution to generate my query points. And, the one, and the by a coupon collect argument, we know that m is omega d log d if I only use one distribution to generate all query points. So to avoid this, the basic idea is to use a sequence of distribution to generate my query points, say d1 to dm, and I sample xi from di. I also allow di to depend on the previous points, say x1 to xi minus one. But to control the behavior of these distributions, we consider this condition number, which is defined to be the supreme over x, this importance weight, supreme over f, fx squared normalizing by the L2 norm, times the inverse of the distribution dix. So in fact, an uh, average score is the distribution minimizing this condition number, which is exactly d. So ideally, we hope every distribution in this sequence have a similar performance as the average score, so we expect the condition number to be in the order of d. Uh, unfortunately, we do not know how to, how to achieve this. We will relax it to say most of the condition number in the, is in the order of d, and I use a coefficient to control the ear condition ones. And we show this using randomized spectral classification introduced by Basson, Spearman, Srivastava. However, uh, randomized, uh, randomness is necessary here to tolerate adversary noise. So we will use a specific version by Lee and Sun. So that's all I want to say about linear regression. Next, let me discuss a uh, sparse Fourier transform. So the family is defined as this way, given the sparsity k. So it contains all linear combinations of k basic wave functions of arbitrary real frequencies. So each wave function is defined by a real frequency fj, so it is just e to the two pi f jx times the coefficient vj. So our main contribution for here is a, is a explicit bound on the importance weight over a fixed interval. So, the, so as, as we discussed before, the, the, this, this quantity supreme over f, fx squared normalizing by the L2 norm also actually works for nonlinear family. So in here I define the L2 norm to be, uh, to be the expectation of a fixed interval. And we want to understand this important weight at every point x. So a few remarks. So the first one is that this family is not linear so because we allow arbitrary real frequencies. The second thing is that this family is actually ear conditioned because degree k minus one polynomials are in this family. And here are the examples. So the left hand side is the signal and we only observe it from minus one one, the right hand side are the frequencies. So our main result is a simple but almost tight bound which shows that for every point x, the importance weight is k log k over one minus the absolute value of x. So this actually suggests a explicit distribution to re when we want to learn sparse Fourier transform over a fixed interval. So the curve is essentially one over one minus the absolute value of x, but we need to round the corner using, some, using the condition number. And I want to say like uh, uh, very recently, uh, Avron Kaparov, Moscow, Moscow, Verinka, they didn't improve this and extend this to arbitrary Fourier structures, not necessarily sparse. Okay, so let me summarize. So we will present a general, we present a general approach to improve the query complexity. So we give like an OD query learning algorithm for active regression. We also present a explicit sampling distribution for sparse Fourier transform. So a few, uh, two open problems. So the first one is that can we extend this to LP regression and logistic regression? So the second one is that uh, for sparse Fourier transform, what if we replace the distribution underlying the L2 norm as a standard normal Gaussian? So actually this is related to random Fourier features for kernel machines. So thank you, that's all I wanna say.